Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the National Marine Aquarium's third online learning session, Mermaid Tales. My name is Marina the Mermaid, and I'm so pleased you've joined us here again so we can learn all about animals who live under the sea. Now, last week, we learnt all about classification. That word we use when we're grouping animals together based on their similarities and differences. And I also read you a story about a little sea dragon who was trying to figure out who she was. And ever since then, I've actually received quite a few beautiful drawings and pictures and crafts from you all. And they're all decorating the walls of my mermaid cave. So thank you so much for those. And I would like to just show you a few here. Now, this one said saves the oceans and this one was drawn by Seren aged five. I really like this one because she has written save the oceans which is really really important isn't it because all these animals need protection. <laughs> I particularly like the clownfish. Well done Seren. Pop that one down here. Now these are lots and lots of crafts that Connie has created and decorated her fireplace with which I think are really really beautiful. Well done, Connie, great work. <laughs> now here we have some more crafts. Here we go, this, these ones were created by Fox, aged four. So I really, really love the turtle. I think he's absolutely beautiful. So well done, Fox. <laughs> now, here we go, this one is really cool. This one uh, is from age, uh, Thea, aged five. And this is a drawing from her favorite book, Snail and the Whale. I think that's an excellent book too. <laughs> so fantastic, Thea, thank you so much. I'll pop that one back down. And finally, we have Amaya, and this is great. This is a lovely painting of her on the beach with her dog. Fantastic job, Amaya, really, really good. And of course, we have received some more crafts just here. Okay, so these are from Yardley Primary School. Aren't these beautiful fish? Now, this one is from Gabriel. Thank you, Gabriel beautiful <laughs> and over here uh, we have oh, ivy's beautiful fish so thank you so much so this was class 19 from yardley primary school absolutely beautiful thank you so so much now i'd also like to give a shout out to renee leroy and fabrice from white rock primary school lovely drawing thank you so much and abigail and her sister anna from brent primary school <laughs> thank you so much for your drawings too now, it wasn't just crafts and pictures I received. You guys also wrote me some letters asking me some questions. So I'm just going to answer a couple of those questions now. I got asked, how do turtles make their shells? Well, I have a turtle right here to show you. <laughs> now, turtle shells are formed when the turtle is still in the egg and the shell is attached to the baby turtle. Once the baby turtle hatches, the top layer of the shell will keep shedding so the shell can grow with the turtle and the turtle can get bigger and bigger throughout their lives the more that their shell sheds. So what a lovely question. Thank you so much for that one, guys. And also, I got asked, how do octopuses change colour? Well, octopuses are covered in lots of teeny tiny cells called chromatophores. Can you guys say the word chromatophores? I think it's such a fun, sciencey word to say. And these chromatophores contain little sacs, little flexible sacs that are a bit like balloons that are filled with pigment or colour, like red, orange or brown. And when the octopus gets a bit scared, its brain sends a signal to these little chromatophores and the sacs fill with colour or pigment so that the octopus can blend in with its surroundings. What a fantastic question. Thank you so, so much, guys, for all those beautiful crafts and drawings. Now, let's move on to the theme of this week. If you joined us earlier for our deep learning session, you would have learned all about ocean navigation. Now, animals under the sea navigate or find their way around by using their senses. And that is the theme of our session today. <laughs> Now, senses help us to understand what's going on in the world around us. And most animals, like mermaids and humans, have five different senses. They have their eyes to see, ears to hear, nose to smell, 
tongues to taste and skin or fingers to touch. <laughs> now, some animals under the sea sense in a similar way, but lots of animals sense their surroundings in really weird and wonderful ways. So let's learn a little bit about that. Here I have a starfish and starfish, unlike mermaids and humans, have five eyes all together. Just for a moment, can you hold out your starfish hand like this? And can you use your other hand to guess where the eyes are? Are they on top, on the bottom, on the ends? Have a little guess. And once you've made your guess, I hope you've had a guess, I'm going to tell you the answer. Their eyes are actually on the ends of their arms. Now they can't see very well, but they can see a little bit and it helps them to sense their surroundings. <laughs> Fantastic job. But also underneath their bodies, they have lots of teeny tiny suckers or tube feet, which help them to taste and find their food in the ocean. And they can taste and smell with these suckers. Can you imagine tasting and smelling with your feet? Wouldn't that be strange? <laughs> I don't have any feet, but I can't imagine tasting with my tail. That would be very, very strange. <laughs> now, one of my favourite creatures in the whole wide world are sharks. I love sharks. And I've got lots of lovely sharky friends swimming around in our eddy stone tank. And they are really, really beautiful animals. And sharks have amazing senses. They can see well, they can smell well. But what's awesome is that they don't just have five, they have six senses. Now, what they do is they actually sense through something called electroreception. Can you guys say electroreception? That's a really fun word to say. Now, can you put your hands together and pretend your hands are a little fish swimming through the sea? And imagine your little fish's heart is giving off tiny sparks of electricity. And that is what a shark can detect. And it helps them find their fish when they're swimming through the ocean. Now, sharks, just like all fish, have a lovely line going down the middle of their body, bodies. And this line helps them to sense the pressure and ripples of the water around them. So they know where they are in the ocean in relation to other objects and animals. So this is kind of like a sense of touch. I just love sharks. Can you guys show me your best sharky impressions? Arr, show me your sharky teeth. Arr, fantastic. I hope you're all doing your best shark impressions at home. <laughs> Brilliant. So we've talked a little bit about how animals under the sea taste and smell and see and touch. And we've learned about an extra sense an animal has. But everybody, our story today, our mermaid tale, is all about the sense of hearing. And it features animals who use sounds in weird and wonderful ways. So sit back, relax and enjoy. This story is called, What's That Sound? Once there was a pod of dolphins playing in the ocean. They flipped and flopped and spun and twirled with such a range of motion. They splashed and sploshed in the open sea and sometimes nearer the shore. They jumped over the rushing waves and heard the ocean roar. They spoke by making clicks and whistles in their little crowd. But suddenly, a noise filled their ears. It was really rather loud. Meep, went the sound as one dolphin swam away. He couldn't hear his friends talk or know what they had to say. The dolphin wasn't sure where the sound was coming from. He decided to investigate, and so off he swam. First he tried the coral reef, which lay in the shallow warm sea. With vibrant colours and beautiful fish, it was his favourite place to be. Nearby was a clownfish hiding in an anemone. His orange scales blended in with his home, making him hard to see. Popped the clownfish as he tried to protect his habitat. Please don't come near my clutch of eggs. This is my home, so take that. The clownfish fiercely flapped his fins, swimming around on the spot. Pop, 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 he popped, popping an awful lot. Do not be afraid, little clownfish. I am just a friend in need. Do you know what that sound is? He asked, very curious indeed. The clownfish listened and slowly calmed down. 
he shrugged his shoulders and said with a frown, I'm sorry, Mr. Dolphin, but I'm really not sure. There must be someone around here who knows a bit more. The dolphin said farewell and swam up to get some air. He saw some mangroves in the distance. Could his answer be there? He swam towards the mangrove forest, not far from where he'd been. Amongst the branches were some grunts trying not to be seen. Now, if you're wondering what a grunt looks like, everybody, a grunt looks a little bit like this. Here's my drawing of a grunt hiding in the mangroves. <laughs> so the dolphin saw a group of these beautiful grunts. <laughs> They were yellow and blue and stripy too. They swished their fins as they grunted. They tried to hide side by side as they thought they were being hunted. Grunt, 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 they grunted so loud for all to hear. They were getting noisier the more that he got near. The dolphin was worried he'd frightened them away. It's okay, little ones, it's safe, you can stay. Do you know what that sound is? He asked as he circled the fish. He flipped and flapped his tail with a swish, swish, swish. I'm sorry, sir, we've no idea, they said shakily in reply. But the seagrass meadow's not far from here. That's always worth a try. The dolphin thanked the grunts and swam on his way. I must find out what's making that sound. It's taking me all day. The seagrass meadows were a beautiful sight with the rays of sunshine making them bright. Long blades of grass swayed in the waves. The dolphin saw a shrimp who looked rather brave. He hoped she wouldn't be scared as she swam over to say hello. She peered at him with sleepy eyes, sitting calmly in her burrow. Now, this is what the little shrimp looked like. All sleepy eyed, hiding in her sandy burrow amongst the beautiful seagrass. <laughs> Lovely. Pop her down. <laughs> All of a sudden, she snapped her claw with a snap, snap, snap. She was trying to capture some plankton, you see, before she took her nap. Gosh, that was loud. You're a snapping shrimp, yes? The loudest shrimp in the sea. But there's a different sound bothering my pod. Do you know what that could be? The shrimp yawned and shook her head as she snapped and snipped at her prey. Why not try the rocky seabed? I can show you the way. But then the shrimp caught her food and gobbled it up in one go. She fell asleep straight away. The dolphin simply said, oh. He whispered goodbye and off he went. That horrid sound still close. What could it be? He asked himself as he swam along the coast. Then he swam down to the rocky seabed. Why, it's my friend, Mr. Toadfish, he said. Now, Mr. Toadfish looked a little bit like this. Very grumpy indeed. Toadfish like to just blob around on the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Brilliant. Pop Mr. Toadfish down there. <laughs> he had a grumpy mouth and spines on his chin. He was plonked on the seabed, not moving a fin. Croak, moaned the toadfish with his wide wobbly lips. He looked up at the dolphin who was doing some flips. I'm so pleased to see you, you great little guy. Do you know what that sound is? It makes me want to cry. Croak, replied the toadfish, having a think. There's a ship nearby. Could that be a link? Good thinking, my friends. I will go and see. But before I leave, please can you tell me, why do you croak all day and all night? You're rather loud and quite a sight. I want a mate, cried the toadfish. They're quite tricky to find. But then, in the distance, perched on a rock, he spotted one of his kind. A smile spread across his face as he said farewell to his friend. He shuffled across the seabed bringing their chat to an end. The dolphins swam to the surface where he bumped into his pod. It must be the ship, he explained. They all agreed with a nod. The sound was still very loud 
and the dolphin was almost in tears. I wish that humans would keep the noise down. It can really hurt our ears. As the huge ship sailed into the distance, the sound gradually did fade. The sun was setting with the sky painted in pink and orange shades. Silence returned to the ocean as night started to fall. The dolphin could hear his pod's whistles and recognise their calls. He leapt out of the sea, spinning around with glee, so pleased the sound had gone. He landed with a crash and sploshed and splashed until the break of dawn. So children, thank you so much for listening to my story today. You've seen my drawings, now I'd like to see yours. If you'd like to draw me a picture or make a craft or even write me a letter, please send everything to learning at oceanconservationtrust.org. I'll be back next week talking about mysteries of the ocean and I can't wait to see you then. In the meantime, I'm going to do a little bit of reading. I find reading really relaxing and quite fun. So today I'm going to read My Friend Whale. And whilst I read, I'll invite you just to sit and relax and enjoy looking at my wonderful friends here at the National Marine Aquarium. I'll see you next week, everybody. Bye-bye.